Hello everybody, Softly Animate Stuff here, and today I will be going over the biology of Absurdary. Now this has uh, been a video or a series that I've been wanting to make for quite a while now. Now, disclaimer, this will, this will very much be outdated as I keep expanding my project. Maybe if Meme God decides to come back with milk, me and him can expand it together. Uh, but basically, today's episode is on North uh, is on North America, and some of its key fauna, Neocene fauna specifically. So this project is basically like an alternate universe where the, where God decided to leave the dinosaurs, but decided that mammals and other animals should get a chance, and decided to have them evolve into the stuff we have today. However. Some animals are like, screw you, and decide to evolve their own way. Or they just decide to do some this, this thing called dying out. Where other animals will take their spot. Which we'll see a bit of it here. So basically, um... And I might be missing a couple fighters from like, Absurd Arena Reborn and stuff. I'll, I'll try including those in like, a part two. And stuff. And plus, since there's a lot of fauna, it's it's hard to make them into stick figures. So before we get into the actual creatures, we need to discuss something called convergent evolution, which is something I'll be bringing up a lot. And I'm gonna have fun in the Proctoa video. That place has the most Melanavian dinosaurs of any place um in the Neocene Earth. So convergent evolution is a thing where, uh, well, animals converge. Basically, when a certain group of animals go extinct, uh, there, there is an, a chance that an animal will evolve and take its spot. A good example, a really good example, is uh, dolphin is uh, ich is uh, after one of the ichthyosaurs died out. During the Jurassic, or, well, I think I actually read somewhere that they went out into the Cretaceous. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comments. And then, uh, was it polycotylid plesiosaurs? These, these guys look like dolphins. So God decides to, is like, you know what, screw you. And decides to delete the dinosaurs and the prehistoric life. However, dolphins are a thing that exist and breathe in our oceans. So the dolphins take evolve into this with this body plan. We'll soon find out that the dolphins go extinct in the Neocene. Well, my timeline at least, and they're replaced. Basically, technically, in this timeline, ichthyosaurs get replaced. A total of three times. Here, here is an example of convergent evolution right now. The duck area, Ceradon pseudo aves, which means, uh, let's see. Sarah's, I, what? Sarah, Sarah's Proctoin for something. Dang, dang it, this is why I shouldn't do videos unscripted. Uh, Jointed tooth, joint, the false bird, the jointed tooth, toothed false bird. So, in the Neocene, North America specifically, ducks no longer exist, sadly. But those demon birds called geese still exist. So, areas decide, like, yo, what's up, yo, 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 geese, I'm finna take your dead relatives, uh, niche now. That sounds so wrong. I'm gonna get cancelled for saying that. So the duck areas, pretty small guys. They're not that big. Like you can see compared to this human right there. I think I have a better size. If you want to see that, go see the free sticks video. And these guys are omnivores, kind of like ducks. They use their paddle-like back feet to uh, paddle through the water, and they'll sometimes. 
their bodies out of the water and keep their legs in, kind of like how modern ducks do it today. A good thing, to, a good way to tell the difference between a normal archosaur and a neo archosaur. So, in this timeline, archosauria is split into two groups: archaeo archosauria, which includes crocodilians, dinosaurs, including birds, and uh, pterosaurs. Neo archosauria includes areas, pseudotheropods, and dragons. Dragons evolving from a pseudotheropod ancestor. Normal archaeo archosaurs normally have a normal tongue that isn't that isn't forked. Forked tongues are I think are a feature I think exclusive to squamates, like mosasaurs, lizards, snakes, and when we get to the Australian episode, the clivers. Neo archosaurs have a special tongue. It's not. It's basically kind of like a forked tongue, but it's threat. It's split into three. It's basically a three split tongue. All neo archosaurs have this. Every single one. Well, the ones in Absurd Arena, like the series itself, have forked tongues thanks to a gene modification. Because apparently the aliens in the series uh, decided that they don't really like the, the cool three split tongue and decided to give them the forked tongue. Which is kind of less cooler on a dinosaur like animal, but pretty cool on like something like a mosasaur. Which is that it's how you tell a griffin apart from like a terror bird. The duck areas commonly swim in groups, and uh, have they? They're usually about like they don't really weigh a lot. I can't come up with sizes here. You won't, normally with an area you don't want to stick your hand in its mouth because you're either, not only is your hand going to get torn apart, but some areas have like really strong bites. So not only is your hand going to get ripped apart, but it's, you're going to break, you're going to break your hand and have 28,000 pounds of force put onto your hand. Duck areas don't bite, won't, won't really bite you unless you do something to to deserve it. So that, moving on from there, wait, where is the second one? There we go. Speaking of Neoarchosaurus, here is our first dragon of the series, our first dragons. Archaeo Draco Karame and Archaeo Draco Lukoa. So, Archaeo Draco Karame translates to black eyed ancient dragon, which Ar Archaeo, I think, either being the Latin or Greek word for ancient, Draco being the Greek term for dragon, and Kuro being the Japanese word for black, and Me being the black, meaning, meaning the black, well, is a Japanese for eyes, I'm pretty sure. So black eyed ancient dragon. Also, Kurame is a character from an anime. If you know the anime, you know. It's very everyone keeps dying in that anime. And Archaea Draco Lukoa literally just translates to White Ancient Dragon. I don't even need to explain that. So basically these are the black dragon and the white dragon. Now with wyverns we'll definitely be seeing a lot of them in this series. Dragons in this timeline are very successful. They keep they, they won't stop diversifying. We got the worm, the semi-aquatic worms, the, the giant sea serpents, the true dragons, griffins, amphitheater, amphitheaters. The ancient dragons, although they're more primitive, they're they're extremely intelligent. Well, a lot of dragons have really high intelligence levels. The black dragon is mainly found in parts outside of Canada, but they have been seen in areas in Canada. They mainly stick, they are mainly nocturnal hunters. And their coloration allows them to blend in with the night as they hunt, hunt down prey. All 
wyverns are venomous. Most wyverns have weak bites. Well, the oriental dragon has a strong bite thanks to its size, uh, but it still has venom. We'll, we'll get to that when we get to Europe. Uh, dragons, uh, their venom, they have different types of venom. The North American black dragon's venom attacks the nervous, no, not the nervous system, the muscular system. The, the white dragon's venom affects the nervous system. What was another one? The, the Australian Collajack, or Tanzanite dragon, we'll get to that when we get to Australia, uh, has uh, venom that can cause kidney failure and dehydration, and of course the Oriental dragon's corrosive venom. Black dragon, all, all wyverns have a pair of claws resemble theropods, and have a sickle claw that they pretty much use not for slicing. Like I was gonna have them, but it's they basically rip off dromaeosaurs and do the raptor prey restraint thing. Black dragons are territorial animals. Getting too close to one will result it into puffing up its feathers. It doesn't really have them here, but well, actually, if you count the pattern in this feathering, and then yeah, and if you get too close, it's gonna bite you, and then it's not gonna be it's not gonna be fun. And plus, they, they'll mob you. They, they hunt in groups. Well, not like pack hunting. They usually use mobs. They're more solitary hunters when they're not going after bigger prey, like we're going to mention the horse bird later. The white dragons are less territorial, are still territorial, but not like once they realize you're not a threat, they'll let you walk up to them. In fact, they don't really have... In fact, the white dragons are usually, if you're going out dragon watching that they usually suggest either amphitheers or white dragons as they're less likely to attack you than a white dragon or or a very defensive titan wing or deathbringer oh yeah although sometimes they tend to be they tend to attack each other in the wild sometimes they'll set aside their differences and some and there are hybrids of white and black dragons they are called gray dragons a light gray dragon is when the is when is when a is when a male white dragon mates with a female black dragon, and a the and a dark gray dragon is when is when a male black dragon mates with a female white dragon. In fact, when mating, even if they are if it is a pair with like a, a black and a white dragon, they are very loyal. To like death do them part, though sometimes they tend, they're, they're loyal animals. They usually stick with their partners and raise their young, young together. Main prey items of the black dragon include deer, rabbits, snakes, nymphs, which are a type of chameleon. I don't have an image of them right now. Uh, smaller dragons. And sometimes they'll go after young snallygasters, which is very risky. As normally, if there you see if there a young snally is around, usually their parents are around. As pretty much the uh, the an adult snallygaster will usually monitor its kids to make sure that no carnivores are out on the hunt. Normal prey items of white dragon sometimes include rabbits, foxes, bear cubs. Wolves, any sick or injured buffalo or moose, and sometimes they can take down a Canadian drake, which, again, I don't have one here. I'll probably do that in a part two. Those sickle claws are used for, basically are mainly used for raptor prey restraint, kind of like dromaeosaurs, which, speaking of dromaeosaurs, I think we actually have one in here. So moving on from these guys, oh yeah, and they have feathers. Oh yeah, and most wyverns have a sail on their back. Mainly used not only for heat regulation, but for display. The, white dragon, the black dragon doesn't really have one. I it might be an exception, unless you count that as a sail. Whoa, we'll get to you later. 
Uh, not Vulture or Titan yet. Next up is Varanus Americanus. This is the, or Varano Tyrannus. Now, I, it's, I, I, I kind of have a hard time trying to translate Varano. So I usually just say Monitor Tyrant. This isn't, this could be a valid genus if I wanted to make it one. But nah, it's part of the Varanus group. It's also called Varano Tyrannus Americanus. Anyways, this is a monitor lizard, meaning it actually has a forked tongue. Unlike the wyverns with their really cool three split tongues. I know I'm talking like, I know these guys like they're real, but I know they aren't, and I hope they never ever exist. <laughs> I'd be terrified to live in a world with dragons. These guys are, a lot of animals tend to evolve the dinosaur body plan because, well, they can. The monitor tyrant, it's, it's pretty much just that if monitor lizards were dinosaurs, I don't really have much to say on this guy other than it is venomous and aggressive. We'll get to its, its relative, the giant poltergeist, when we get to Proctoa. There's a lot of interesting stuff on there. Oh, yeah, and, uh... I don't know what dinosaur I used for the Verano Tyrannus. I forget. But moving on. Here is something that finally isn't a reptile. This is the Chupacabra. This is a s species of artiodactyl found in mainly mainly is native to Mexico since well El Chupacabra is a Mexican like part of Mexican culture now if you don't know what an artiodactyl is it's basically an even toed ungulate so the, these guys aren't dinosaurs they're more related to the goats they hunt they are a part of a, a group of um, artiodactyls called bovids and they're their own group. They're, they're their own, like, genus. But they're more closely related to goats. This is the... There are different species of chupacabra, like... You got the dwarf chupacabra, and... The, uh... The Asian goat sucker. And, of course, well... The Mexican chupacabra... Slash American chupacabra, slash... Of course, El Chupacabra... Or the American goat sucker. These guys are carnivores. They're carnivorous, and they're and they're usually considered pests among uh, farmers in the Neocene, as they hunt livestock, mainly goats. They don't actually. These guys don't really drain the blood. They drink it, but they don't really drain. They don't really. They'll, unlike. The ones in the myths, myths where they just bite goats and drink their blood. These guys will kill them and eat them. As well, they wasted a lot of energy just to get blood. They're gonna, they're gonna try to regain that energy. And these guys aren't apex predators either. That those quills on it, on the back of its tail, it has some quills on it that it uses for defense. If you saw that absurdity episode, yeah, you'll understand. Also, those horns are not used for goring opponents. They usually use their front front leg, their arms, which those claws are modified hooves, jaw and jaws, and sometimes their quills when uh, fighting. These guys use them when fighting rival males. The males will use males have well, females have them too, but usually the males fight fight using those those horns, similar to how. A lot of modern animals like bighorn sheep, bison, and like goats do it today. Chupacabras will norm when they have a when these guys have a kid. They usually one of them goes out hunting uh, livestock and will normally bring the kill back back to its family, which. If you're a farmer, a neocene farmer, and he, and you have and you have too much livestock, these guys can be really helpful for you as they'll 
because it'll help uh, keep um, the, your population down and yeah, as long as you monitor them. Of course, there's a stink bug up there. I'm too lazy to get it. That's not what I'm focused on right now. Oh, so these guys can can be milked. Yeah, these guys can be milked like goats. Am I still recording? Okay, thank goodness. Their milk has a bitter taste. However, in some areas, it is, it is considered a delicacy. Chupacabra meat do, doesn't really taste that good. It tastes very bad, actually. Mainly because of the diet of the animal. Being a predator and scavenger. They're not picky. If something's already dead, they'll eat it. Moving on, we have... Our first, yeah, our first true dinosaur. Now, this, this thing has a really confusing name. Egyptoraptor Forfaticus. I don't know what that last one means. I will find out soon. Please let me know in the comments. I, I know what Egyptoraptor means. Egyptian thief. You're probably wondering, but, but Sawfly, what is it doing in America if it's named the Egyptian thief? Oh no, I couldn't come up with a name for this guy. Basically, mountain lions did this thing called dying out in the Neocene. Out of all things, a dromaeosaur decided to take their spot. Oh yeah, and, it, it, and yeah, they're really good with raptor prey restraint. They will hop onto the back of their prey, dig in with, place those, those toe claws in, and clamp down on the prey item's neck until the until it falls over. And these guys are fast. Mainly they mainly had to evolve those their arms into front legs for speed. And they don't really have a lot of feathers due to their environment. And plus it's easier to animate things that aren't really feathered. Which is kinda why I have trouble animating Seru Venator on Absurd Arena Reborn. The Egyptoraptor Commonly hunts things like small animals, some th things, am I still recording? Thank God. Things like rabbits and st stuff a cougar would eat. But they also will hunt, commonly hunt, the ankle beak, which we'll get to soon. Kind of like with, when you when you encounter one of these guys, you kind of want to do, just do what you would do if, if, if you encountered a mountain lion. As these guys are pretty much just if a mountain lion was a dinosaur. Yeah, these guys aren't very good parents. They will literally, once they lay their eggs, they'll guard them for a while. But once the kids hatch, the parents, not not just the, the dad, no, the mother as well, they both go and get the milk. However, the young are ready to fend, are already capable of fending for themselves. And will mainly hunt smaller animals, and they're prey catalog will get bigger. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, Vulture Titan is next. And now, Absurd Arena Reborns, Vulture Titan looks more like a dragon than this guy. Probably due to gene modification, but this is Vulture Titan Gigas. Meaning vulture titan, vulture, or titan vulture, I, I giant vulture. The vulture titan is not a vulture, or a condor. Condors decided to join the club of uh, the extinct crew, and Scansoriopterids decided, you know what, I'm taking this spot. They, they got bigger, as big as, like, condors. This might be a pretty big individual, though. And gained powered flight. And they are scavengers. These guys are huge and have humongous wings. And are the largest of the Scansoriopterids. Wait, well, I mean, what competition do you have when literally all of your relatives are, like, teeny tiny? That'd be, like, 
your father being like five foot one, your your mother being like five foot three, and yet you came out six foot six foot six for some reason, which would make no sense. That's not how genes work. Because then you'd have recessive traits, unless. Oh wait, I forgot ancestors, right? Dang it. Anyways, these guys, uh, big, they can fly, don't really have feathers because, well, their diet. Since condors went extinct, I mean, we still have vultures, but, but Vulturo Titan has been pretty much just dino, pretty much just the new condor in this timeline. It's kind of sad that the condor, because condors were at, were, and I think they still are endangered animals. So, technically, this guy could exist if the condors go extinct and no one takes their niche. But it won't be a Scansoriopterid because those all died out, sadly. But it is still likely. That they. That the condor could go extinct. I. Hope they, I, me saying that actually doesn't cause them to go extinct. They're beautiful animals. If you're wondering, do I want my things to exist? No, not at all. I don't want a giant T Rex sized lizard in my backyard. I use lizard as an analog. Hang on. Um, who's next? Oh, yeah. Next up is the Grave Rubber. Uh, I'm still deciding what to make this guy, whether it should be a Therapsid like Gorgonopsids. Or a synapsid, kind of like Dimetrodon, an Edaphosaurus. But it is, it is a mainly like a mammal-like reptile, or as as Red Raptor writes stated, a stem mammal, meaning this guy is more closely related to you than well the previously assumed mentioned Vulturo Vulturo Titan is. Grave robbers, unlike how the series depicts, they're thanks to because Cruelodons are like, yo, grave robber is a god. They really died twice. First one was, well, reasonable, because you know, Snally, all it's going to take is one bite to the neck and it's done for. The second one was just because the Grave Robber won too much. Anyways, the Grave Robber, their bites are strong because they normally, because like their name suggests, they dig up graves and eat the remains of, of the deceased. It's not just the he dead humans, they'll eat Pretty much anything that's dead. They'll eat pretty much anything. They rarely hunt hunt their own food. It's either they eat carrion or plants. If they're on the brink of starvation, they'll hunt something down and exert a force stronger than out of a hyena's bite. They're often considered pests because they eat, well, they dig up graves. Which is actually something modern, uh, some modern animals do, like... Hyenas were depicted doing it, but... Hyenas aren't the one to do it. Komodo dragons... Do it. These guys are pretty chill. Unlike the one end of Arena, which has... No... It, it hates everything that moves. Oh, well, not, not yet, not yet, not yet. The, I couldn't... I couldn't find my stick figure, so this is the Wendigo. Canis Thanatosis, which means, I think, canine, I think it's dog, which means, which literally means death dog, or dog of death. The, the Wendigo is uh, a wolf species that lives in North America, like, well, yeah, like pretty much everyone in that is shown in the video, not mentioned, shown. Well, some are mentioned. The Wendigo... I don't really have much to say on this guy, because mainly because I don't really have a good image, but these guys are basically bipedal wolves. We'll be seeing the Indian Devil in Proctoa. These guys, uh, they have a white they have a white head that resembles a skull. That's that's just because of white white fur. And ma it's mainly for display. They have very good hearing. Pretty much if... You, if if you combine a dinosaur and a wolf, you'll get you'll probably get these guys. 
Next up is the ankle beak. Yes, this is a bird that looks like a horse. I think these guys evolved from hornbills. Like, judging from the, its head. The ankle beak pretty much took the role of horses when, when they went extinct. Pretty much if... They're, they pretty much are, have most traits similar to horses. They're mainly preyed upon by the... Uh, by the uh, Egyptoraptor that I mentioned earlier. So, yeah, you, you wouldn't want to be an ankle beak. Who's next? Oh yeah, next up is the turtle area, which, again, convergent evolution is a thing. These guys look, well, what do you think they look like? These guys resemble turtles, and they don't have, don't really have a tail. Their back legs are pretty much like, are pretty much used as like a paddle, kind of like modern seals. And their shell is mainly used for defense, however, with enough, with a, with enough force you can kill them by just stepping on them. I don't really have much to say on this guy. These guys are omnivores. Now... One you've probably been waiting for. The Snallygaster. Sarah Draco Robustus. These are the largest... This is the largest species of non... Of pseudotherapod that is not a dragon. If you count dragons, that would be going to... The, uh... Great Titan Fin. And the Atlantic Scylla and Pacific Tiamat. The Snallygaster also has one of the strongest, has the strongest bite forces of of any non draconomorph pseudotheropod. The Snallygasters of uh, these guys uh, are probably the most animals, most animal thing that I've been trying to depict. They can't fly because they're too big and too heavy. They're literally same exact size, same height, same length, same weight as a T-Rex. Their wings are used for display, not only for mates, but to ward off predators, which they don't really have any. They're pretty much the apex predator. To ward off smaller, smaller predators from their kills and to prevent them from getting attacked. These guys are very overprotective parents. And are very, very, very good parents. Pretty much if you... If you decide... Normally a Snallygaster won't want smoke with you. They'll nor it'll normally act curious. It'll sniff you if, if it thinks you're... If it's, like, hungry, it might... It might... They'll only... They won't attack you out of... In response to hunting as... We aren't their food source. They mainly hunt animals that aren't humans. However, they will attack mainly during breeding season, or if you're around, if you're around their nests, or you 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 steal one of their children, they will hunt you down, and either and will either and will make sure you give their kid back, whether it involves killing you or not. And the worst way they kill you is with their bites. They won't slap you with their wings or tail. Nah, they're... F you know, T-Rex's bite force is 12,000 to 12,800. 12,800 PSI is the estimate I use for T-Rex. 12,000 is more reasonable. I suggest use that instead of my estimate. Neither one is presumably correct. The Snallygaster has a bite force of 13,000 PSI. If we're using my estimate, that's of TRX bite force, it's a bit stronger, but using the main estimate, it's a thousand times stronger than T-Rex's bite force. Yeah, you don't want that on your spinal cord now, do you? So basically, if you steal one of its kids, yeah, you 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 better put that put that little Snallygaster down, before it's one of its parents, whether it be the father or the mother, it doesn't matter. They will, they can smell their kid from a mile away, and they'll realize something is wrong. They will hunt you down. And 
if you don't comply, giving their kid back, yeah, they're gonna take it personally. And we'll... Whoa, what the hell? Whoa, what the hell? Yeah, they they'll take it personally, and will make and will make your spinal cord an existent, well, non-existent. You'll pretty much be dead by the time one of your family members gets home if you and you mess with the snallygaster. Which is why a good thing to do when you're around an a, a snallygaster that has kids. Don't run away, as it's gonna that's gonna trigger its predator response. That is the one time it's going to attack you via hunting. If you run away from one. That it's just observing you, or if it's angry. But be glad they can't fly. Now, these guys are very good. Not only are they very good parents, but they're very loyal mates. They usually will stay together until one of them dies. Guys, and, and the kids usually stay with them and will even recognize their own parents when they're, once they're adults. And if, if the, the kids of the original parents, if those kids have kids, and, and the kid and the, and the kid's mate decide to both go out hunting, or go investigating, they'll sometimes leave, leave, uh, their, their own young, and have their parents raise them, and so on and so forth. A young Snallygaster is basically like a young T-Rex. They're more lean and slender, and their teeth are more used for slicing. Their young are, when they're in that teen phase, are a bit more aggressive than the, than the adults, as they will probably attack you, as, well, you're similar size to them. But it, attacks are usually rare. A lot of these are, remember, not, these aren't monsters, unlike how Absurdarina depicts them. No, these are animals. Big scary non-existent animals but still animals you got to remember dinosaurs probably dragons aren't monsters they're living breathing animals with hearts with beating hearts oh yeah and, and if kind of like modern day crows and ravens they they can hold a grudge they won't kill you if they see you again and you escaped a previous and you did something to warrant getting threatened they'll they'll try and prevent you from getting through usually with their wings if you attack them then that's your own fault and yeah they're going to exert that 13,000 psi bite bite on you but if you did if if you escaped an attack where it almost killed you and you did something or you did something really bad to it in that previous scenario, you actually did do something to deserve it. Yeah, they're going to kill you if they see you again. Mainly because you did something to them in the past that that har either harmed them or their family. Or their mate. Which means they are not going to like seeing you again and will put an end to your life. So that's why Sorry about that, guys. I had to, I had to go silent. But yeah, don't do something that they don't like. That will probably get you killed. Just don't do it. It's not good for you. Anyways, uh, I will end the episode here. 
If you liked it, leave a comment. If I would, if I got something wrong about real life examples, please let me know. And if you like the series, I'll definitely do part two, which well, I would I'll definitely put an episode two out, which will be discussing South America. All right. See you later. Bye.